Welcome back to Late Night. We're here with Bill Burr. Now, Bill, for those with a discerning ear for dialects, uh, they might know that you are from the New England area. And uh, <laughs> still that bad? I feel like I got a lazy Boston accent. <laughs> now, tell me, uh, how did you feel? Obviously, uh, there was a lot of, uh, of New England uh, DNA on that Tampa Bay team with uh, Gronkowski, uh, with Tom Brady. Uh, were you Antonio happy Brown? for them, or was it heartbreaking? Oh, my God. I was rooting for them like I was watching a Pats game. Um, I love all of those guys, and, and all of them help put the Patriots on the map, and they are free to do what they want to do. And if that's the place that they want to play, I'm not going to be upset about it. And I wanted to see him. I wanted to see Brady get his seventh because, uh, you know, just during this whole time of social media and everybody just hating on everybody, I just feel like, I don't know. It's kind of shameless the way people have behaved during his incredible career, both owners of football teams, the Colts, uh, right up to like fans and stuff. So, um, and then I am a huge football fan. And I think if you were a football fan, you actually enjoyed the game yesterday. But if you're the casual fan that likes offense, you probably didn't like it. But just to watch them with that game plan, which I've seen beat a team like the Chiefs for 40 years of watching football. You take away the number one option, establish the run game, time possession. It, it, when you watch a team execute it the way Tampa did, it's, it's literally an art form. And I won money on Tampa. I won money on Cleveland, too, because they had a team that could have beat them. They just, I don't know, people sort of get enamored by how quickly KC could score, and then they feel like then they have to go to the air, and you want to slow the game down. So I did learn that. With, you mentioned uh, uh, you mentioned the Colts. Is it safe to say that you're uh, you still have a bone to pick with the Flategate? Is that what we're talking about? No, there is no bone to, to, to pick with that. It's just, I mean, it got laughed out of court. The judge was like, and pissed for them wasting their time. <laughs> so then they had to come up with this whole other idea on how to suspend Tom. They're like, well, are we a, a corporation? Is he an employee? Do we have a right to suspend him? Then he suspended. It was so ridiculous. And meanwhile, that guy is like, he tanked half a football season to get Andrew Luck. They pumped crowd noise in. He sat on the competition. I've been through this a million times. You can do your homework or you, you don't, but whatever. I, I, I get the thing. So then, so I was psyched that he was going to do it with Tampa. So maybe people would stop hating on him. And then, you know, I don't know. KC has like family members sending out tweets, <laughs> trashing the refs and stuff. <laughs> Uh, it's like, don't you think your team lost their composure a little bit somewhere in the second quarter? I think that's why Tom was laughing. I don't uh, know. I do. I do think that Deflategate was, you know, was silly. I do also, as a Steelers fan, think Spygate was real. But it again, was. it was. <laughs> but you know what else was real? Was the 70s Steelers all being on steroids. That's including true. Including quarterback who admitted it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's I'm not okay. fighting. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> But that's okay. It, it was, doesn't count. At the time, it was a, it was a, it was the, it was the money ball no, of Frank its era. Frank Tarkington still bitches about it. <laughs> Frank came out in the field and goes, "Why are they so much bigger than we are?" <laughs> but listen, that's, <laughs> and this is another thing too. Like as far as like stealing signs, if you think that's cheating, then we should forfeit World War II. <laughs> like stealing signs is an art. It's not like you're filming them. They're over there going, "Throw the ball to number 10. <laughs> It's like you film them, and then you go through it, and in halftime, if, if you can steal one or two signs. Uh, and it's not illegal to have a camera up in the booth, by the way. It isn't. They just don't want you to have it down on the field, which is why I've said this a million times. If you watch a college football game, when they're sending in plays, a guy's holding up a sign. There's like a piece of toast, the sign for pie. It's like, why do you think they're doing that? Okay, uh, and I'll go even further. I think... The Houston Astros, that was a legit World Series championship. All right. Okay? If the Red Sox and Yankees can have $200 million roided up free agent <laughs> teams and go around the league like it's their breakfast buffet, <laughs> then why can't they put a camera and, and bang on a trash can? Good for them. They, prob they finally brought a gun to a gunfight. <laughs> I'm so sick of people acting like there's, there's a Santa Claus. <laughs> oh, hey, I have one last thing to it's ask like, you about. There's all kinds of stuff going on. I love a corked bat. Yeah. I think it's hilarious. I love when a pitcher's on the mound and he's got half the condiments from Arby's <laughs> on his shirt. I love Phil Negro and all those guys. It's hilarious. <laughs> and I've actually heard that a lot of batters prefer 
that they do that because if they have more control, they won't get hit in the head with the baseball and die. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, I'll hit, <laughs> I'll hit 290 instead of 297 and, and live. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know what people are, are whining about, but he's got seven now. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, if you're still going to sit there and whine about it, then God bless you. But like, He's now like he has seven. Bill Belichick has eight. Yeah. Uh, Yogi Berra has ten. I think uh, Bill Russell has eleven. And at that point, you have to get into coaches, and it's uh, Phil Jackson, then Red Auerbach. It's insane. It's a good list. Uh, last quick question I want to ask uh, because you were so good, so good in The Mandalorian. It was such a joy to see you in that. Um, was that something where you did you grow up a huge Star Wars fan? Because we, you know, I've talked to a lot of people who have had. Uh, you know, cameos in that show or parts in that show. And for them, it was this huge deal to be a part of the Star Wars universe. Was that true for you? No, I was a, a spaghetti Western Clint Eastwood, um, like Once Upon a Time in the West, that type of stuff. Although I just saw that movie for the first time. But any movies like that. And when I got into this thing, I thought it was going to look like how most of the Star Wars things look. But when John Favreau showed me what it was going to look like and Rick Famuyiwa that I was in basically a spaghetti Western in space. Like I was beyond, I still can't believe that I'm a small part of it, man. It's a, it's an amazing, uh, it's an amazing, like, I don't know why I, I've been so lucky in my career where I, I, I keep falling in to other people's greatness. You know, I did like three or four sketches on the Chappelle show. I did a couple of episodes of Breaking Bad. I fall into this Mandalorian thing. I have nothing to do with any of these things. <laughs> They're all other people. And I somehow like, like I'm like the fan guy who like came down in the boxing <laughs> ring. So I get to be a part of these things. And which takes me back to Patrice because Patrice was that level of a talent. It's Killing is Easy is the name of the documentary. It comes out February 19th and the, on Comedy Central. And there's a lot in that title with the depth of Patrice. Because with most comedians, it's all about killing, and that's where you stop. And that's where he started. That's how funny he was. He was like, stand up here and making these people laugh and killing is easy. He went Colonel Kurtz, like in, in, in Apocalypse Now. He went, he went upriver. He left the program in the greatest artistic way ever. And it was, it was a pleasure to watch him do it, and I miss him tremendously. Uh, well, I'm so glad you did it. I can't wait to watch it. Bill, it is always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much for making the time. No worries. Thank you so much. I'm going to work on my accent. 